All right, guys, so this video is gonna be about um, some of the hesitations that I know I personally had before I got started as a coach, and so I'm just gonna share um, like maybe four of those hesitations, and you might be able to relate to some of them. Um, and so the first one that I'll say is actually, this really wasn't even a personal one for me, but I remember it coming up a lot, so I'm gonna share about it anyway but I think it's one that people get a lot and it's, is this a pyramid scheme? And so to be honest, when I first heard that, I didn't even know what that was. And so I like, you know, eventually like kind of Googled it. Cause I remember my husband even being like, what is this some kind of scheme or something? And, um, the answer is no. A pyramid scheme is when, um, you are earning money um, for instance, if it's like for signing up people or, you know, getting them on board with you to do something, but there is no exchange of goods or services. And that is not how that works. This is, this is a direct sales company. So, um, you know, there is that exchange of goods and services that people are purchasing. And as far as, um, the, like growing your team goes, you don't just get paid for signing people up with you. Okay. There's got to be some sort of like purchase of a product. For instance, if I have a coach that signs up with me and they purchase a challenge pack in the sign up process, I'll earn the commission off that challenge pack, but it's not like I'm just earning money because I got somebody to sign up. If that makes sense, there's an exchange of goods and services happening there. Okay. So that's one. Um, the next, one of the next hesitations I would say that I personally had was that I was worried about being viewed as a salesperson. If you know me at all, you know that I am, I'm a pretty reserved person. I'm an introvert. I am not pushy whatsoever. I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable or feel like I'm like throwing something in their face. And so that was what I was afraid of is I didn't want people to view me that way. And the thing about that is, is on our team, okay, we don't believe in doing those, you know, salesy type things that people get a bad rep, rep for. And so in other words, like we're not cold messaging people our links and saying, oh, purchase this. Like I've gotten those before and somebody's like, oh, here, check this out. And it's like, whoa, like I didn't even ask for that. Or when you're added to like a million different groups on Facebook and nobody even asks you if you want to be in them, right? So um, we are not pushy like that, okay? We are simply sharing our journey um, trying to inspire people, trying to connect with people, sharing what's working for us, but not in a like in your face kind of way. Okay. We do it in a way that is, um, like tasteful and, um, subtle and really that it's, it, we're just truly sharing, um, you know, about our lives. And so you, so don't, you know, don't worry about being viewed as a salesperson unless you are doing the types of things that, you know, that you would think of when you think of a typical salesperson. Um, so don't let that worry you. Okay. Um, and now the other hesitation kind of goes hand in hand with it. And that is in terms of like sharing your life on social media. I was the type of person when I first got started that I had a Facebook account, but I didn't really like share very much at all on it. And I was like the typical scroll the news feed, but I didn't even want to like or comment on anybody's post because God forbid they knew that I saw it. Like that's how bad it was and like how much just anxiety I had and just fear of what others would think. And so, um, the idea of like having to share my life on social media was a little bit intimidating. And, um, and I'm like, Oh, who, like who cares? You know? And when I first started as a coach, they were the, the word of like the rule of thumb was to post like three to five times a day. And it's just like, Oh my gosh, like that's just so much. Now we've gotten to a point where it's definitely quality over quantity, maybe one to two posts a day. Um, and then if you're using like IG stories, but what I've learned, and this is something that's taken time over, um, you know, my career as a coach is that, um, we like when we are sharing, we are sharing to connect with people to inspire people. Um, like if we went through something challenging that day and we can kind of share how we overcame it or like spin it to win it or, 
um, if we can add value to somebody's lives or just like let them know like, hey, you're not alone. I'm going through this this thing too. But just being raw and real and sharing um, and that is, that's how we're going to connect with people and build that trust. And, um, you know, I think I just kind of had to get over the fact that like, I'm not going to connect with everybody because when you try to be too broad in general, you're not going to connect with a single person. So you really have to like, um, you know, speak to the people that will be able to connect with you when you're sharing, but you just kind of have to like get over it and realize, look, like if what I'm sharing is going to help somebody, then it's worth it because I can't tell you guys how many times I've gotten messages from people who not once liked or commented on anything I shared, but then proceed to tell me I love following your story and you inspire me so much. And so you never know whose life you are going to touch. So, um, and you know, if they become a customer at some point or a coach on your team, awesome. But if they don't, you know, it's still pretty freaking cool to know that you had a hand in helping to, you know, inspire somebody, um, or, you know, bring something positive to their life, you know, being that positive light in the news feed. Okay. So don't let the fact about like sharing on social media scare you. Okay. Because I was there too, and I'm a total introvert. And if I can do it, then you can do it. Um, and then the last thing I would say is feeling like you have to be at your ideal, like fitness level, um, in order to be a coach. And that is the furthest thing from the truth. You guys because, and I, I kind of went through this a little bit when I first started, but, um, for me, it was more of a place of like, I, I never experienced anything beach body related. So for me personally, I was like, okay, well, I need to like be a product of the product and see if it works for me and if I actually like it before I speak to it. But if you're coming from a place of like, oh my gosh, like I still have 50 pounds to lose or, you know, like maybe you're just beginning your fitness journey, you guys, this, that's the perfect time to start sharing as a coach because I guarantee you there's somebody else out there that can relate somebody else out there that maybe still has 50 pounds to lose or um you know whatever whatever the goal is if you feel like that's holding you back like oh I can't do this yet I can't be a coach because who am I to you know speak to health or fitness and I haven't reached these goals yet or whatever like that's a bunch of bs okay you have to use that to your advantage and you know, share and be real with people and invite them to join you. Um, so if you feel like you don't know enough, or if you feel like, oh, you know, I haven't reached my goal yet, so I can't do this. Honestly, coaching could be just the thing that you need because it'll add that extra layer of accountability. And when you start, you know, bringing people alongside you to join you on your health and fitness journey, um, you know, it's more motivation to continue and to not back out on yourself. So don't let any of those things hold you back. Okay. And if there's anything else that I didn't hit on, but you have hesitations about, feel free to, um, you know, feel free to let me know. All right, guys. Hope that was helpful.